Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 51 to 59. It's the Gospel for the first day of the fifth week of Lent. St. John writes, Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. That's from John chapter 8, verse 51 to 59. Christ who is our life. You know, the great pall that hangs age after age over humanity is the fact of death and all that leads to death. It is a great tidal wave that eventually sweeps all away, an irresistible monster that grasps and swallows all. Death is the oncoming crisis that every individual must face. And yet we take for granted, in a semi-casual way, the blows it delivers, snuffing our persons ceaselessly. We hear of 60 persons destroyed by a suicide bomber, 80 persons who died in a plane crash, thousands who die in an ocean tidal wave. Death is man's enemy, and it is everywhere. It always has been everywhere. No matter how striking the advances of science, death can at most be delayed or its pain mitigated, but it cannot be overcome. Its meaning is a mystery for, to the natural man, and the myths and rituals of the various religions attempt to provide an explanation and an answer to it. Into this scene of anguish and mystery has stepped the living God, and he has come with the ultimate answer. That answer is to be found in the person of Christ. In the Gospel I read earlier, our Lord speaks of what we must do to avail ourselves of this divine remedy for the perennial problem of mankind. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Whoever keeps my word will never see death. The answer to death is to accept Christ for who he claims to be and to keep his word as the expression of this acceptance. If we do this, we shall not die, die in the sense of a true destruction of our life and our person. Our physical death will be asleep as our Lord referred to the death of Lazarus, his friend. A living, obedient faith in the person of Jesus is the goal and the key to the life, of the, to the life that God wants us to share, life in abundance. But this faith in Jesus means accepting his testimony about himself. And our Gospel text today that I read is a key text in terms of Christ's claims about himself. As I have pointed out already, in our passage of today, our Lord claims to be the source of life. He gives life to those who keep his word, and whoever keeps his word will never taste death. 
But of course, God is the giver of all life. And our Lord goes on to make this implication even more explicit in his answer to the question, who do you make yourself out to be? Our Lord makes himself out to be Yahweh God. As we read, so the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. He is applying to himself the name of Yahweh and stating that he is the God of Abraham and Moses who preceded them both from eternity. God preceded them both from eternity. And that is Jesus, though he is not the Father. These are extraordinary claims, and it is difficult to think of any figure in human history who made comparable claims. Christ is either a brazen deceiver without equal, or he is the pride and glory of our race, a wondrous phenomenon in human history. The best way to determine which of these he is, is to draw near to him repeatedly in prayer, and to contemplate his person with an openness of heart. His goodness, his holiness and his beauty will vindicate the truth of his teaching about himself. Christ could not lie nor deceive. Throughout our lives, let us gaze in prayerful wonder at this man who is God. St. Paul writes that his life is Christ. Christ is his life. We can know so much and have so much, but if we do not know Christ, and if we do not possess him, then we are poor in the sight of God. Let us make ourselves rich unto eternity by making the person of Jesus our treasure. 